Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea Tranquility. That's right. It's Wednesday, new release day, and uh, in the co-captain's chair once again, two weeks in a row, Mr. Stephen Reed. What's happening, my friend? I am looking forward to going on holiday. In it's Eden, perhaps? In Eden. Absolutely. I love to talk about an album that splits opinions. And this album splits opinions. It does. It does. So it's a uh, Marillion reissue time. Once again, there we have Deluxe Box Set, Holidays in Eden. I like Holidays in Eden, actually. Not one of their best. No, absolutely. I, I do, too. Um, it's, is it a misunderstood album? Actually, I would say no. That, that's what I've taken away from this. So this is remastered. It's been remastered by a chap called Stephen W. Taylor. Uh, and as all these ones have been, I, th there's quite a difference that has to be said. The Marillion remasters have been interesting and worthwhile. I don't necessarily love all of the remasters, and I don't necessarily like them all more than I do the original versions. There are some that I definitely have, and there are some that I'm not so sure about. Hello. <laughs> and that takes in this one. This is seen as Marillion's pop album. So this was the second album with H, Steve Hogarth, in the band after Season's End. And Season's End pretty much continued the Marillion sound just with a different chap singing, yeah. I would suggest. It, that's how it feels. A lot of the music was written before Fish left um, and Hogarth took up those songs with a few that were from that time as well, as to be said. This was the first time that the band went, okay, we've got a new singer and we have to write an album as well. And as always with all of these, there are now quite a lot of them. Okay, so these are great, I have to say. They are, yeah. They are absolutely great. And the highlight of all of them for me, this one included, is that you get an hour-long documentary where the band and sometimes other people sit down and just reminisce, tell you about what was happening with the band at the time, you know, explain some of the songwriting, they explain what was happening with the band's dynamic at that point. And with this one, you get a chap called Christopher Neal, who talks quite a lot, and he produced this album, okay? And Christopher Neal was known for doing Mike and the Mechanics. He had worked with Celine Dion. For those over here in the UK, he had worked with Shaken Stevens. Okay. So that's a diverse mainstream catalogue. And if you ever want to understand, not fully, because it's an hour long documentary that covers lots of different things, including friction within the band, Steve Hogarth was, for want of a better turn of phrase, sent home from the songwriting sessions because he was been patient because Marillion take months to write a bar yeah <laughs> so he was kind of like but we've got songs we've got songs and we're like not yet <laughs> and they cover that quite candidly until they worked that they actually could work together that's that's the stage that it was at here but if you want to understand how much a producer can influence an album this documentary is gold because it is clear that the record label emi wanted hits Marillion were huge at the time. Do you know, they, they'd come off yeah. two huge albums with Fish where they had been a chart act and everything had kind of slowly but surely begun to tail away from this place, Childhood and Kaylee and Lavender and Art of Lothian. And, I mean, there's videos on the Blu-ray here. And they're okay. They're also a little bit tragic because they're cl somebody clearly, and he was a good-looking chap at this stage, don't get me wrong, somebody's clearly looked at Steve Hogarth and gone, he kind of looks a little bit like Lloyd Cole from Lloyd Cole and the Commotions and a little bit like Michael Hutchins. Hmm. So what we should do is we should undo his buttons on his shirt and then we'll have him looking wistfully into the distance so he can record all of these things. A new he, heartthrob, um, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to be fair, he had the goods at this stage. He's a good looking chap. And I mean, he's standing in the wastes of Iceland as a helicopter swoops round and records them, and the band are somewhere in some like Doctor Who set in Wales or whatever it was, <laughs> playing away all pretending that they were looking at each other when they're really not. 
So it was clear that he was seen as he's going to be the star. So the dynamic is really weird at this stage because that is not what Marillion were ever meant to be. No. I think this new remix, the band talk in the documentary that it beefs up the sound, it's more what they imagined it would be. Wow, that's not what I get from it at all. Suddenly all of the backing vocals that are there that make them pop songs are going, wow, 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 wow. I mean, I've never heard the phrase, holidays in Eden. Holidays in Eden, holidays in... You don't realise how much it's there. It's absolutely constant. These are pop songs. Wow. And it was an interesting listen, but it didn't do what I'd anticipated. I anticipated that any new remix would make this sound like a Marillion album. And that's what this is. You know, it's got the Rake's progress on it. It, it. That closing trio of songs... It's as prog as anything Marillion did. But there's, there are things like Dry Land on here, No One Can, songs that I love. I love these songs. I don't have a problem with any of these songs. To me, they're even more pop songs now. It's fascinating. Hmm. Really interesting. So the documentary, to me, as you go across all of these, as you go through these, I will eventually, once season 10 comes out next year, I'm going to go and sit and just watch the documentaries one a night, over the space of the, the eight nights, because there'll be eight in total that we get. Because I'm not convinced that there will be many better band histories with the band's full involvement than you'll get across those eight albums. It's a fascinating and often candid history. They're, they're not shy in saying that there was lots of flaws here. There was lots of issues here. There was things going on that they weren't necessarily happy with. And then things that they were totally on board with, that with hindsight, they are glad didn't work. That's the fascinating thing, is they can look at this and kind of go, do you know what we were trying to do was this? I'm really pleased it didn't kind of work out that way. Really candid, really interesting. So what else do you get? So you get the whole album remixed, and you get live in Hammersmith from the tour for this album across two CDs. Now, some of these sets have got four CDs and a Blu-ray or DVD. This is three and a Blu-ray, and that means that all of the other content, and there's quite a lot of other content, is squeezed onto the Blu-ray. Now that to me is a downside because I listen to my music from CDs or vinyl, and I watch Blu-rays. I don't put on a Blu-ray to listen to all to all the bonus tracks, all of these from the Blu-ray player. That's not my preference, but I've had to with this because that's the way that it's been configured. So all of the kind of standalone single tracks, Sympathy and Walk on Water, which were only available on singles. You've got some B-sides, demos. Admittedly, it's all available before, and it's all been on CD before, has to be said too. They're only on the Blu-ray. That's a little bit of a downside for me, it has yeah. to be said. Um, then you get the documentary, and then you get um, all of the promo videos and a little demo that, that they did um, when they were recording, which is good fun. It's quite candid. They're obviously... Happy to have the film crew there. Not happy to have the film crew there. The songs are not finished and they're not ready. Um, and that it's fun to look back on. It's a bit cringy too, has to be said. And then you get a full performance from Rock Palast, which I think is a Dutch or German. I'm going to get that German, now. Yeah, German, German show where they just show a whole show from a band on stage. They record it and you get to watch it. And that is obviously just as this album has come out, and it's outstandingly good. It's really good. You can tell that at this stage, Hogarth has settled in. He kind of, they're obviously highlighting his era on that. On the live CDs from the, the Hammersmith show, they cover everything. There's Lords of the Backstage, there's Easter, there's early stuff, there's latter day stuff. And suddenly they've gelled. They all sound comfortable. They all sound like they know each other. There's a heckler very early on in the show. You can't quite hear what he says. I, I guess it's something along the lines of Fruits Fish or Giza Bun or something along those lines. And okay, it's not the most eloquent put down, but Hogarth just goes, shut up. <laughs> and the crowd are just on side with them. And you kind of think, okay, that's the stage that we're at here. So lots of fascinating stuff here. I can't recommend this highly enough if you like Marillion. Is it going to change your mind about holidays in Eden? I would doubt it very much. I would doubt it very much. It hasn't changed my mind. It's still an album that I like. It's not an album that I love. It's still an outlier in the catalogue. It's still the one that is furthest out this way compared to just about anything else. 
There are a couple of clunkers later on that will not be part of this reissue set at all. But this is the one from the kind of classic era that you kind of go, hmm, okay. But this answers the questions, why? In a lot of ways. And it is what we expected, and it is what we suspected, I would suggest. But to hear it from the band themselves, and from the guy that produced the album, I think it's quite invaluable. And I really enjoy it. And that has been the real strength of this whole reissued catalogue. And yet, I mean, I haven't even covered the fact that it looks stunning. You get lots and lots of text in here, but the artwork that comes along the way is really cool. It's really nice. Um, and the whole thing, all of these sets have really been, I think, quite lovingly put together. Oh, yeah. You kind of get the impression that people give a damn. The band have insisted that this will be the last time that these are done. Yeah, I mean, we've heard that lots of times. What else you could do with them, I don't know. You know, unless there's, I mean, there's not another physical format, let's be honest, we're, we're kind of done with that. Unless there's something special and fantastical that comes along that would require it, I'm not quite sure what else they could do with them. So, yeah, that's the deluxe reissue of Holidays in Eden. I really like it. <laughs> Is it going to make you love the album if you don't? No, no. but I mean, you know, th these deluxe sets are for the true fans. Yeah. The, you know, if you've never listened to Holidays and Eden before, I, I wouldn't say, well, go buy the deluxe set. You go buy the regular CD, you spend your, you know, 15 bucks or whatever it is on it. But, you know, these are for the true fans. If you are a true Marillion fan or Jethro Tull as well, because they're both, these sets are made by the same company, uh, you have to have these. You just have to have them. I, I really like the fact that right across the seven, so therefore I hope the eight, um, when Season's End comes out next year. I really like the fact that the band and most of the band members from the eras have sat down and given their thoughts. Some have been really positive. Some have really not been. Some yeah. of that friction is still there. Some of it's not. It's been fascinating. And I really take my hat off to them because it would have been quite easy for them just to say, you know what, just put the music out there. Fancy it up, put the music out there. But they've taken the time to sit down and be very honest, I think. Yeah. You know? And maybe where they are as a band and the fact that they have been doing really quite well again over the past kind of 10 years has allowed them to kind of go, do you know, we don't need to big up things that don't need to be bigged up. But at the same time, they stand their ground. They all stand by this to varying degrees. It's very interesting. Yeah. And I'm very impressed with it. There you go. So, uh, holidays needing. Deluxe set is now available. So uh, like I said, if you are a fan, you haven't picked this up yet. I think Stephen gave you a really good summary of what it's all about. And if you, you have any of the previous deluxe sets uh, from Marillion or Jethro Tull for that matter, you know what you're going to get, which is a lot of good content. The great books with pictures and lyrics and all sorts of important stuff. So uh, go check it out. And uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. All the damn time. Stay tuned for more. I uh, hope to get you a couple other new album releases today. So stay tuned for those here on the channel. And uh, we've got the Monsters Den tomorrow. We've got uh, Friday more at the Funhouse on Friday. Steve and myself and Simon Bray will be back on the UK Connection on Saturday. And then we've got Ranking the Albums on Sunday. So a lot of stuff happening here on the channel. And uh, stay tuned as always. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week and weekend. I am P. Pardo for Stephen Reed. Have a good one, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.